seven and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, one to two Eastern Standard. Uh, uh, yeah, one to two. No, yeah, one to two Eastern Standard Time. Hold on. 11 I'm sorry, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Shame on me. Uh, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, as well as he has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability. You can get it for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is the savings of $199, or 22%. You get it for one full year for $1,195, which is the savings of $593, or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve has a huge amount of different tools that he uses. So first off, you know, if you get the six month, a year, no big deal. It's still a 30-day money-back guarantee. As soon as you get the newsletter, you're going to get all those tools that Steve used with descriptions exactly how to use them. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I'm glad that Thanksgiving falls on a Thursday and is only a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the reason is because if it was longer, I'd probably turn into a blimp. Isn't it the truth? Like you can roll me right down the street right now, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Yeah, we can put on like 10 pounds in, in like two oh, hours. Between takes two months, two months to take it off again. Stuffing, potatoes, and desserts, forget it. Right, I know. Exactly. I love exactly. it. I love yeah, it. Absolutely, totally. absolutely. So, you know, I was born on September 9th. Okay. In my family, we've got a lot of, so I'm a September 9th. I've got a brother-in-law that's an 11-11. So yeah. he just recently had his birthday. A sister-in-law that's a 5-5. Yeah. A grandson that's a 10-10. Wow. Uh, a niece that is a 1-1 out uh, there. Okay. Right? It's pretty wild. Isn't that so cool? I thought, yeah. 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 So I thought what we'd do today is we'd talk about the nines, the September 9th, so to speak, the nine nines. I like, hey, listen, that. I went in the Marine Corps September 9th. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about that? I know. I like it, man. <laughs> I, I love it. All right. So we're going to talk about the nines today. The nines we're talking about are the ones that were developed by Tom DeMarc. Okay. Uh, he described it in his uh, in, in, in many of his books. Uh, one of the books, so I think maybe the, the first book, is called New Market Timing Techniques. So it's a very technical book, but uh, after I uh, describe to folks what it is we're looking at, they may want to go ahead and take a look at that, or I can shortchange that if they simply, as you mentioned, if they subscribe to uh, Mastering Probability, they're going to get access to a, um, a workshop that's going to take them through in detail exactly how this pattern works. So a TD9 yes. count, and we're just focused today on the uh, tops out there. Okay. A TD9 count consists of nine consecutive closes, where each close is greater than the close four bars earlier. Yes. And it works for all time frames, folks. Yep. So you can, if you're an intraday trader, you can use this tool. If you're a weekly, you know, it d d doesn't matter what your time frame is. Now, when this occurs, meaning when we get a confirmed TD9 count top, the market market typically does one of three things. It's either a trend reversal, so that's a possibility. Could be just a hiccup, sideways move or so, or it could be a consolidation in a little bit larger area. And that usually happen right after bar number nine. Now, the high probability outcome is that a TD9 count top will at least pull back the test support. And one of those support areas that I look at is the oscillator unchanged line. Now, a TD9 count pattern looks something like this on a chart. So folks that are subscribers to my newsletter, they'll see the nines either at the top or the bottom out there. And again, we're looking at, in this case here, four consecutive, uh, nine consecutive closes where the close of each bar is greater than, not equal to, but greater than the close of the bar four bars prior. And the cool thing about the TD9 count pattern, Tom, is that it allows us to anticipate the market's next move out there. Yes. So what I do is, uh, as you know, you've seen my newsletter, and it contains a number of different tables in the morning and in the evening. And this table here I made up for, for our show. And this shows, uh, uh, this shows what the status of the TD9 count patterns were as of Friday's close. And if you take a look at the uh, fourth column here, it says D... CD. Yes. Any anything that's got a star next to it, whether it's a nine or it's a one, shows a TD nine count top. So it's a valid pattern. It follows all of the rules. I even have out here in the very right hand side the last TD nine count top, the last TD nine count bottoms. They even show those TD nine counts that are there. If it doesn't have a star next to it, it means the pattern was negated. So when we take a look at this, we're going to see with inside the cash indices, we've got seven of the nine that I track out here that have got TD9 count topping patterns. If you look at the index ETFs, we've got five of the uh, 
uh, six that are shown out here. And what I've included is the equal weighted NDX and the equal weighted S&P 500. Those are really critical to understand nice. what they're doing as well. Then I've got the sectors inside the S&P 500, the Magnificent 7, Meta being the only one that as of Friday's close had a TD9 count top. Now, as I mentioned, TD9 count top should test their OULs, their oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line, folks, is the difference between the 39 and 19 period expense moving average of price out there. And so we put this on the chart here. This helps us. So we'll take a look at the cash indices. This shows us exactly where price should pull back to. And it's that green line that is on my screen right now. Each of these are green except for the transports. Now, the transports do not have a TD9 count top. So they're whether they pull back to test that line or not is as irrespective of, of the pattern that's out there. So right now in the Dow, for example, 34,950 would be a price target, 4,505 for the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, 15,839. So five of the eight U.S. indices have TD9 count tops. Now, a key index without a TD9 count top is the semis. So they've got a TD9 count pattern, but if folks take a look at this chart here, they'll see that the high formed on bar number seven. That doesn't qualify as a TD9 count top. The, the, the high of the pattern needs to occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar number nine. But what we can say about the semis is that price got back to where price had broken down from. And that's, a, uh, that's also another great tool of the TD9 count pattern because it's a objective, not a subjective uh, value out there. And oftentimes getting back to where price either broke out from or broke down, in this case here broke down, can be a top. So even though it doesn't have a TD9 count pattern, a TD9 count pattern, it did get back to a resistance level. So it could be a top. Three of the four equity future contracts have TD9 count tops, and they suggest retracements back to their oscillator and change line. But the TD9 counts, they can fail. Here in the blue lines, you can see on Netflix, you can see the successful TD9 count top and bottom. But if we come over here to October or November the 13th, when we had a successful TD9 count, the very next session, Price closed above that high. That negated the pattern. By the way, Tom, right now, Netflix has a TD9 count top as well out there. The NQ is going to go ahead and complete its TD9 count top today. And that suggests that price should pull back to that oscillator and change line. So, folks, you should watch 15,877-ish. That's a price target. The number uh, moves up and down as price moves up and down. A close below that level, that oscillator and change line, that's going to suggest to move back to 15,748 and below that, 15,465. These are the top eight weighted instruments inside the NDX 100. They make up 52% as of Friday's close. Only Microsoft now, because Microsoft today, that little spike higher, actually triggered a TD9 count pattern. So by day's end, we should have a TD9 count in Microsoft. That pattern should complete on Monday. I'm sorry, on uh, tomorrow. Now, during bull market runs, this is really important. These blue lines show that typically the buy the dipsters occur after two or three consecutive lower closes. In this move up off of the October lows, we've never had two consecutive lower closes. So today may be that first day out there. And that says this could be just simply a normal two bar knee jerk reaction low out there. So over the course of the next several days out here, we'll have a pretty good feel. Lastly, this is a seasonal chart for the NDX 100. It typically, Tom, this is not wild. It typically bottoms on October 26th wow. when we bottomed this year. I, I had no it. idea until I pulled this chart. You know what's so great here, yeah, too, Steve, thank you so much for all the great work, is yeah. that either way, so you come back to the offset or on change line, if it's light, you buy, and if it blows exactly. top side, it's like, okay, there's a failure, and you're going to go higher. Unreal. You got it. You got it. Great job, man. Have a great Thanks one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Stay right there, folks. You might think that if you want to be 